Very good. Well, good morning, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to the house of our God. It's a very special day, everybody. It's Sunday. <laughs> Sunday is the day that God gives us to encounter him. So I pray that you have an encounter with God before you leave the house. I pray that you would hear his voice and perhaps see his face or maybe receive a mandate from heaven as he sends you from this place. Amen. There is a reason why we go to the house of God. It's the greatest reason of all. It's greater than your Monday and your Tuesday and your Wednesday and so on. It is the day of the Lord, everybody. So welcome to the house of our God. Praise the Lord. Yes, Tiger Lou, I enjoyed you playing on the congas today. That was nice. <laughs> Praise God. As we begin today, I must say that I believe the Lord has a mature message for us. Um, am I with the right group today, I wonder? <laughs> okay, I got three of you. It's a solid three, and we're going forward. <laughs> I believe God has a mature word. I believe that God is our father and he treats us and, as children and he raises us, but he wants to bring us to a point of usefulness, Amen. of profit, profitability, something like that. <laughs> and today is the day. So many times over our lifetime, and it's not over yet, but we go to church looking for the blessing. Nothing wrong with that, but that's not today. Sometimes we go to church, we say, God, hear my cry. We say, God, heal my body. We say, God, and so on and so forth, and you lay your request before him. And that's okay. But you know, sometimes God's looking for you. And he says, as he says in Isaiah, whom shall I send and who will go for us? Who will do the work of the Lord? I know we all want to be blessed. And listen, man, you guys are abundantly blessed. Can I get an amen? amen. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. But who, who will do the work of the Lord? Are you here to do the work of the Lord? Because God does need you. He has birthed you for purpose. He has raised you with patience, waiting for the day. Waiting for the day. With a little chuckle from my father. <laughs> so I do believe that God wants to ask something of you today. Is that all right? Amen. Can I continue? Still weak, but I shall continue. You know, as of late, we've been talking about visions of God. God wants to show you something. Before God asks you to do something, he's going to ask you to do something today. And before he asks you to do something, he wants to show you something that will empower you to do what he's called you to do. Can I get an amen? amen. Lately, God's been giving us visions of God. We, we spoke last week from Ezekiel. Do you remember Ezekiel chapter 1 if you have your Bibles? Otherwise, let me read a verse or two. In Ezekiel, it was concerning Ezekiel being in the land of Babylonian, Babylonia, and as he was among the captives by the river Kabar, Scripture tells us that the heavens were opened and he saw visions of God. And also from within the, the vision of God, he saw the likeness of, do you remember, four living creatures. And this was their appearance. They had the likeness of a man, and each one had four faces. They had the face of a man, the face of an ox, the face of a lion, and the face of an eagle. And Ezekiel had a vision of God. What caused Ezekiel to have a vision of God? God just decided to reveal himself. And I do believe today is a day where he wants to reveal himself to you. He wants to show you something. What precip precipitates that? Sometimes nothing but God. Ezekiel was just hanging out with his buddies by the river. You ever hang out with your buddies by the river? Phil and I, not often, we didn't grow up by a river. But maybe some of you folk down here hanging out with your buddies by a river. We hang out with our buddies by the street 
can, a garbage can on the corner <laughs> with the pigeons under the L. But wherever you congregate, <laughs> we would hang out between, I got my done, between the train tracks where, where we'd put an ash can and we'd burn a fire and stay warm in the winter. But wherever you congregate, <laughs> It just so happens Ezekiel with his buddies by the river. And they weren't singing songs, they were complaining because life was tough. And all of a sudden God gave them a vision. God wants to give you a vision. He wants to appear to you. He wants to pull you out of your ordinary life. I believe if God would somehow peel back the curtain right now of heaven, you would see the throne room as it actually is. I know we were limited in our eyesight. Sometimes we only see the physical realm, but if you could see the God realm, you would see the throne of heaven. You would see fire. You would see an emerald rainbow. You would see the seraphim and the cherubim surrounding the throne of God. You would see the most magnificent creatures you've ever seen in your life. 20, 30 feet tall, massive, bowing before God and crying out, holy, 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 Lord God almighty. You would see the strongest creatures you could ever imagine bow before the living God. And us mere mortals think that we can stand and shout at God. Ha! You would see the most majestic of creatures bow and declare with the breath that they have. They would declare what we sometimes hardly declare. And they would say, holy, 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 Lord God almighty. And they would dare to follow up by saying, the whole earth is filled with his glory. Amen. Oh, they got something on us. If we ain't doing that, they got something on us. And I think God wants to give you a vision. Because if you saw something, you'd live differently. You'd act differently. If you saw something, you, 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 you'd be empowered to live a different way. And that's why sometimes God wants to interrupt your ordinary life and he wants to show you visions of God because you would never live the same way. Ezekiel needed that. Amen. There's another vision of God in Isaiah. Isaiah chapter six, if you'd like to turn there. And it says in this passage in regard to Isaiah's vision, Isaiah had a vision of God also. It says in the year that King Uzziah died, what did he see? I saw the Lord seated on the throne. Have you ever seen the Lord seated on the throne? If not, you need a vision of God because it would change your whole perspective in life. He said, I saw a throne high and exalted and his train, the train of his robe had filled the temple. And you know what? You know what Isaiah saw? Perhaps he saw the same creatures Ezekiel saw. Some say Ezekiel saw cherubim, some say he saw living creatures, some say Ezekiel saw the fiery seraphim of heaven. Amen. And Isaiah says, I saw the fiery seraphim of heaven. He says, above, above the throne of God were seraphs, and each had six wings. And with two wings they covered their faces, with two they covered their feet, and with two they were flying. And they were calling to one another, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God almighty and the whole earth is full of his glory. If we don't see this, if we don't declare this, we are in need of a vision of God. You need, man, you need to have a vision of God if you're living a boring, ordinary life. You need a vision of God. If you think that life's got you and this world is something but evil, then you need a vision of God. You need a vision of the throne room of God to know that he sits upon a throne. He rules and reigns the entire universe. Not only this, this puny planet that we call Earth, he, he rules the entire universe, which is beyond discovery. Beyond discovery. That's right. If we could only see through the eyes of heaven and not the eyes of Earth, we need, everybody, a vision of God. Yes. In verse 4, it says, at the sound of their voices, it says the doorpost and the thresholds shook. Man, wouldn't it be nice if things shook when you spoke? <laughs> in the right way, in a nice, nice, godly way. 
Wouldn't it be nice? Things could shake if you speak the words of heaven. It says the threshold shook and the temple was filled with smoke, indicating the glory of God. And um, Isaiah said in five, he says, woe to me, I cried. Huh, maybe somehow, somehow you and I would respond the same way. If you actually saw a vision of God, you would say, I am ruined. <laughs> I am ruined. I am unworthy. As Isaiah did. For I am a man of, what did he say? I'm a man of unclean lips. Not only that, he said, and I live among a people. He got the rest of them too. <laughs> they, hey, they got some unclean lips too. You know why they got unclean lips? Because they're not speaking from the throne room. They're not saying holy, holy, holy. They're not saying Lord God Almighty. They're not saying the whole earth is filled with his glory. When they heard the chant of heaven, they said, hey, my language ain't so clean. It's not so pure. Uh-huh. And neither is it. I haven't. And then he invited everybody around him. I haven't heard it from you guys either. <laughs> That's right. All right. Verse 6. Then one of the seraphs flew to me with a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with tongs from the altar. And when it touched my mouth and, 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 and with it, he touched my mouth and said, see, this has touched your lips and your guilt is taken away and your sin atoned for. Amen. Then I heard the Lord saying, uh-huh. Oh, good. Thanks, Keith. Whom shall I send? What else? Who will go for us? Oh, you're just very anxious, Sister Trick. <laughs> I'm going to sign you up. First name on the page. <laughs> and, 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 here you go. And I said, say that. Here am I. Somebody say, here am I. Here Somebody I. say, send me. Send All right. Let's pause for a second here. Now, listen. This is a mature message. I know sometimes you need the blessing of heaven and you want to go to church to get the blessing. You want the blessing? You got the choir. I watch the TV programs like you do, man. You got the choir in the background and they're singing and they're saying you want the blessing of heaven. You call 941-368 and you sow your seed and you're going to get the blessing. Listen, what is that nonsense, first of all? <laughs> what is that nonsense? That's a polluted message that asks for your money. It is a polluted message that says you don't get the blessing unless you pay for it. I don't want I want to set you all free. And let, if you're not, that is not the kingdom of heaven. Amen. You can never pay for it. You can never pay for it. It is a free gift. It is polluted. Know that it's polluted. Keep your money in your pocket and you walk yourself over here. <laughs> And then we're going to tell you, you ain't getting the blessing. God wants you to do something for him. He wants you to be the blessing. But you see, we, we, we are ourselves polluted because we want the blessing. Therefore, we're willing to pay for it. That's polluted too, you know. That's a little selfish. You want your blessing so bad, you're willing to pay for it. Until somebody says, listen, I just want God, man. I just want to say, here am I, oh God, send me. Can I get a witness somewhere? I hope, hopefully somebody's floor is shaking and some pillars are going to be knocked down today. Yeah, yeah, we get tainted and polluted too because we want the blessing. And that's why we're willing to pay for it. It's not the preachers, it's the listening to the preachers too. It's a system, it's not an individual, right? It's the wrong, it's a religious system that we're in bondage to. So make no mistake, huh, you cannot pay for it. You cannot pay for it. It's too expensive anyway. And God sent his son, Jesus Christ. He paid the price and you get the blessing. Amen. You got the blessing. And since you already have the blessing, God is going to speak from that place. And he said, since I have already blessed you, I have need of you. Yes. And since you don't know who you are, I'm going to tell you who you are. Since you don't know you're blessed, I'm going to show you you're blessed. Yes. Now I'm going to tell you what I need you to do. Amen. You are more powerful than the mighty angels in heaven. The seraphs and the cherubim, you are more mighty than them all. And God says, I have use of you. Can you envision yourself big and majestic as if you had some large wings? I don't know. But you are more powerful than you know. God wants to show you something, everybody. 
God wants to show you something. Turn to the book of Revelation. Let's look at another vision that God decided to give someone. He decided to give John a vision. Why? God wants you to see something. God wants you to see something. I was sitting in my desk this morning looking out the window and I was just watching all the cars go by and wondering, oh, they're not going to hear the message today. You know, they're not going to hear anything about the visions of God and the throne room and things like that. Like, what's the importance of the message? Why do we have to hear it anyway? What does it do? God says, listen. You started off with this, listen, listen, listen. <laughs> he says, I want to show you something today. So everybody in this room, everybody online, everybody who hears this, God just wants to show you. He chose you. And he wants to show you something. Amen. Maybe you'll benefit everybody else out there. Amen. But he wants to show you something. It does matter. It does have importance. When God wants to show you something, there's nothing more important. So in Revelation here, chapter 1, verse 9, the caption here is that John had a vision of the Son of Man. Visions of God. God wants to show you something. It says here, I, John, both your brother and companion in the tribulation and kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ. What does he say? I guess this was his hangout place enforced by the government. He says, I was on the island of Patmos. I wasn't by the river. I wasn't by the train tracks. He says, I was on the island called Patmos. And as I was hanging out there one day, it says the word of the Lord, God, it says for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ, Amen. He says, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and I heard behind me a loud voice as the voice of a trumpet. Today is your day. You could say I was sitting in church one Sunday morning and I heard God speaking to me. I heard him. That's, that's a good. Yep. I heard him calling to me. I, I heard him say, I have something for you to do. First, he says, I want to show you something, and then I'm going to ask you to do something. We're not going to say I was by the river Kabar. We're not going to say that I was uh, before uh, uh, perhaps the casket of King Uzziah. We're not going to say that I was on the island of Patmos. We were hanging out here in Lehi in church on Sunday, and the word of the Lord came to me, and he says, I just decided I want to show you something today. I want to give you a vision. I want to give you a vision. I want you to see something. Okay, Lord. Go down to Revelation chapter 4. Revelation chapter 4 is when God gave John a vision of the throne room. The throne room of heaven. And I think God wants to show us something here in the throne room of heaven today. I pray that you see the throne room of heaven. I pray you understand it because it matters. It matters. The invisible realm is what causes the physical realm to be in existence. So in Revelation 4, it says, After these things, I looked and behold, a door standing open in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was like a trumpet speaking with me, saying, come up here. And I will show you, I want to, I will show you things which must take place after this. John says, immediately I was in the spirit and behold, a throne set in heaven. It says, one sat on the throne. And from the throne proceeded once again, lightnings and thunderings and voices. Seven lamps of fire were burning before the throne and the seven spirits of God. Before the throne, there was a sea of glass like, what does it say, everybody? Like crystal. And in the midst of the throne and around the throne, hey, look who's here. <laughs> it's the four living creatures, everybody. Check them out. We know them. They were full of eyes in the front and in the back. The first living creature, well, we know this, guys. The first living creature was like a lion. The second, like a calf or an ox. The third, like the face of a man. And the fourth living creature was like a flying eagle. Amen. The four living creatures, each having six wings, just like the seraphim, the fiery seraphim. Mm -hmm. We're full of eyes all around from within, and they do not rest day or night. 
day or night can also be interpreted as good times and bad times. They did not cease in good times and bad times. Say what they say. Holy, holy, holy. Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Amen. Well, I want you to pop down to verse 11 there. You are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things, and by your will they exist and were created. Amen. Amen. God wants to give you a vision of God. He is in charge of the universe. Nothing goes on in this world and in your life without God Almighty sitting upon the throne. You don't have to see him, and you don't have to know him. For that to be true but doesn't that make you want to see him and want to know him since he's the one that's making everything happen that happens you can live this life ignorant your whole life it doesn't change the truth he is king of kings Amen. he is the creator of the universe whether you know it or not Amen. whether you want to know it or not whether you go to church or not whether you have a vision of God or not, Amen. he is, he was, he is, and he still is to come. Yes. I think it's better knowing it. Yes. I think it's better being a part of it. Amen. God wants to show you something, then God wants you to do something. Amen. This ain't for the weak, and it ain't for the children. It's for the mature. Amen. It's for those who have visions of God. That says, I've seen God and I know God. Excuse me, but get out of my way. Because <laughs> I got something to do. Mm -hmm. You know, it's interesting. You see these throne room visions and, and we can be tempted to be afraid or in awe. I guess all of them are acceptable. But there's something about the throne room of God. When God wants to show you a vision, I, I took note there in verse 5 once again, because it was like the same words. It says, proceeding from the throne were lightning, thunderings, and, and, and voices. It says the temple shook in the other passage. And I say, sometimes, man, when you have visions of God, it's going to shake some things up. Sometimes it's going to cause you to walk on ground that shakes a little bit. It's going to cause some things to shake around you. But you need to know this. You can walk in the middle of it all. The ground can shake beneath you and the temples, the, 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 the pillars of the temples can crumble if they must. But you can walk right in the very middle of it because God's going to shake some things up and it's all right. How can the earth not shake at the presence of God? When you have a vision of God, how can your earth not shake? If you got this boring earthly like life, then you ain't you don't see God and you don't know God. So don't you want to? Yeah. All right, that's about half and revenue you carried about half of them. <laughs> it's so real and it's so true. How can you let life pass you by? How can you chase these empty dreams and these empty avenues without knowing God? How can you let life pass you by without knowing God Almighty? I will not. I will not. I will know God. I will seek him. I will find him. Amen. And so will you. Forget about all of the empty riches of this empty world. That we will spill our blood and sweat our sweat to get this emptiness. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I tell you what we need. I tell you what you need. I tell you what God wants to give you. He wants to give you visions of God. He wants you to see the throne room of heaven and it will change the way you live. It will change your desire. It will change. It will change the very person you are. It will make you just like him. It will make you just like him. And there's nothing on earth like him. You sure you want to follow the rich and famous? Ha! <laughs> God wants to give you something. 
He wants to bust up your ordinary life and he wants to give you a vision of, the, of God. He wants to show you the seraphim and the cherubim. He wants to show you the seraphim, it means the burning ones. They are the burning ones, the fiery seraphim of heaven. He wants to give you a vision. Amen, everybody. Amen. Take note before I give you the command of heaven. You ready? Are you ready? Yes. Oh, man, I got I to gotta beg for that. Are you ready? My goodness. Where were you? The first one to sign up. <laughs> I'm ready. I'm ready. Are you ready for the command of heaven? He's got something for you to do. Are you ready? Yes. Well, can I change my answer? I don't know. If I... <laughs> Are you ready? Yes. Okay, that was good. <laughs> I'll give it to you. That was good. <laughs> uh, okay, take a look at Revelation 3. Right before you have a vision of God in the throne room. I've heard silly nonsense as you have. Not, not knowing God. It says that God sits upon a throne. He doesn't sit on a literal throne. He sits on your hearts. He sits on your minds. He rules and reigns from that seat of authority. Amen. You know, it says, how dare you think you're going to go up and hug him. And he, there's lightning around him and thunder and there's seraphim and cherubim. You think you're just going to roll up and sit on his lap? Not only do I think I'm going to sit on his lap, <laughs> I think I'm going to sit in his throne with him. Oh, I got maybe a little, like one laughter of agreement over here. <laughs> okay, well then we have to read Revelation 3. You ready? Ready? Revelation chapter 3, verse 20. It says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, what will happen? I will. Come on, you know this. I will come in to him and dine with him and he with me. To him who overcomes, what will he grant? I will grant to sit with me on my throne as I overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. You think you're just going to roll up? Yep. Yep. Going to sit with him on his throne. Amen. Praise God. God wants to in closing today. First, God wants to show you something, and then God wants you to do something. Yeah. He doesn't want you to get the blessing. He wants you to have a revelation that you are blessed, uh -huh. and he wants you to be the blessing. Yeah. Okay? Okay. God, first of all, I believe primarily for today, he wants to give you a vision of God, but he wants you to see the fiery seraphim. Take note of the fiery seraphim. Seraphim, by definition, are called the burning ones. I say, what are the responsibility of the fiery seraphim of heaven? All right. Number one, they are called the burning ones. And I put this one first because the most important aspect of the seraphim, I think what empowers this majestic heavenly being, what makes the seraphim so mighty and powerful and fearsome and burn with fire, hmm, is his passion for God. Yes. That's right. Come on. They're called the burning ones because of their passion for God. And everything will flow from that. Yeah. All power and majesty and duty will flow from your passion for God. What do you have passion for in this life? All right. Come on. What do you burn for? What do you desire? What do you put your energy and effort into? What do you want? What do you want? I know we want lots of things. It's like Satan and, and tempting Christ in the wilderness. He says, what do you want? You want a job? You want money? You want success? What are you chasing? You, you want a family? What do you want? What do you chase? What do you want? What do you want? And the seraphim is the one who says, I just want God. I mean, everything flows from that place. Don't worry about life. Life takes care of itself. God will take care of your life. Do you burn for God? Amen. Do you want him? Because yes. if you want him, you can have him. The seraph is the one who burns for God. 
You know why they burn for God? Man, they've seen him. They know nothing on earth compares to him. There's nothing like God. All of the riches of this world put together cannot compare to him. Nothing is worthy of him. He is above it all and greater than it all. In this life that you will live, what do you want? The seraphim is the one who wants God. Whatever else comes in this life comes, right? The seraphim is the one who burns for God. Amen. God wants to give you a vision. Some of you might say, I'm not that. No, he's here to give you a vision to show you who you really are. You are the seraphim. You are the one that burns for him. There's a Christ inside of you. There's a love inside of you for, for God and everything that is true and right. It's inside of you. And God's going to show that to you today. He's gonna, he wants to show you something. What he wants to show you is who you really are. Who else could show you? Not even you can show you yourself. You don't know who you are. Your creator has to tell you who you are. He wrote it down. He said, you are as a seraphim of heaven. You're the ones who burn. You're the burning ones. Man, I, I, I don't know, man. If you had the eyes, if I had the eyes, I would see right now burning, burning lights in front of me right now. Because that's who you are in the invisible realm. You burn with the fire of God. And it's covered up with this flesh. And sometimes you just don't know who you really are. What do the seraphim do? What is God calling you to do? Do you remember the story of um, Adam and Eve and when he put him out of the garden and it said that he put two fiery angels and two fiery swords and their job was to it was to guard the path that leads to heaven what the amen what the what the seraphim do is they guard the path that leads to heaven and they guide the lost souls they guide the lost souls into the path that leads to heaven. Amen. That's right. And I don't know how you define that, but sometimes it's not as religious as you think. Yes. Sometimes it's going forgiving somebody, loving somebody, giving somebody some peace, some laughter, some joy, some whatever. Give them something out of your treasures. Yes. Give them something. And the seraphim are the ones that they guard the path to heaven with a fiery sword because they are a flame of fire themselves. And they guide the lost back to paradise. Yes. God says, I have a requirement of you today. I have something for you to do. But I have to tell you who you are. I have to show you who you are so you are empowered and enabled to do it. Amen. You are the ones. It's true that guard the path to heaven. And you are the ones who will guide the lost back to this path. Can I get a witness from somebody who's still gonna remain on the roster? <laughs> still me, Lord. Still me. I just got a couple more. The seraphims, they're the ones that carry the live coal from the altar. Remember when, when Isaiah said, I'm not worthy? the seraphim went and got a coal from the altar and touched his lips and purged him of his his guilty conscience yeah. sometimes we're sent from the wrong realm but if you're sent from the throne if you are a seraphim you're the ones who have the ability to go to the altar go back to the finished and accomplished work of the cross if you will and go touch somebody's lips and tell them you don't got to tell them how it's all been done just tell them it's done Sometimes you want to give them the start and what? Just, just get to the point, would you? Oh, you're forgiven. <laughs> you're loved. You are free. Your guilty conscience is cleared. God is with you. He is for you. He is in you. How about, how about being the seraphim with the words of heaven? Why don't you take a coal from the altar, a live coal, and put it upon someone's lips and say you have been touched by God? You are holy, you are worthy, you are strong, you are able. Amen. Those words are not trite. Those words are filled with heaven. Amen. God says, I have something for you to do. 
Okay, everybody. Something the seraphim do also. Their habitation is the presence of God. Where do you find the seraphim? You got to go to the throne room to find them. When John had a vision of the throne room of heaven, he saw the fiery seraphim. Where do you find them? What is their habitation? They hang out with God. Amen. What makes them so powerful, everybody? What makes the seraphim so powerful, so mighty, so able, so fiery? They hang out with God. They walk with God. God is their best friend. God is who they talk to. God is who they know. They wake up in the morning talking to him. They go to bed at night talking to him. They hang out with him. They know him. It's not a Sunday morning thing. It's their life. What makes the seraphim so mighty? What makes the seraphim so mighty? Their habitation is the presence of God. Yeah. Mindful of him always. Guys, gals, <laughs> there's nothing more powerful on this earth than the invisible realm. And I pray that becomes visible. God, his throne room, the activity of heaven. You think it doesn't exist? God brought you here to give you a vision today yeah. to tell you I do exist. I'm more real than the chair you're sitting on. Amen. He says, yeah, I'm talking to you. I'm calling you. I'm sending you as a mighty seraphim from heaven. Do you believe that? Because it will empower you if you do. Yeah. What else about the seraphim, everybody? Their vision, this is, this is extraordinary. Okay, I got two left, guys, okay? Their vision and perspective is from the throne room of heaven. So, you know, the seraphim, they have eyes all around them, but they, they see things from the throne room. That's, the, that's where they live, right? They hang out at the throne room. So they see things from a heavenly perspective. And when you see things from a heavenly perspective, you declare what you see. And what do they see? They see the whole earth is filled with the glory of God. And I know your rational earthly mind will disagree with that. And your, at, your rational earthly mind will remain <laughs> right where it is in the dirt. You want to see glory? You want to see God? You want to see power? You want to see truth? Yes. See it from the perspective of heaven. Amen. What is, and I know we're, 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 we're um, deceived in regard to the perspective of heaven. We're deceived. And we think that heaven looks down upon the earth with dismay and disgust. We have these wrong belief systems that think God is displeased with man and he's coming to judge the earth. And he's coming with fire. He'll come with fire. At least he'll come with fire. <laughs> All right. You are the fire. You're going to take that fire. You, 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 you with me? You're going to take that fire. You're going to touch them on their lips because they keep saying they're unclean. Somebody apparently keeps telling them they're unclean. There needs to be a fire that comes from heaven uh, that touches the lips of man. Oh, can, you, can you believe that? Or is that too much for you? Is that too much for you? Is the work of the cross too much to believe? Is, is, is the sacrifice of Christ too great to grab hold of? Can the salvation of the world and the sins of the world be, be forgiven? Is it too great a message for you to actually believe? Okay. I tell you what, if you view from the earth, you'll see nothing but hell, damnation, and destruction. But the seraphim, they don't see from an earthly realm. They see from a heavenly perspective. And they say, first of all, there's no one like God. In the year King Uzziah died, King Uzziah was one of the greatest leaders of Israel and led Israel into to prosperity and victory. And when Uzziah died, the hearts of the Israelites must have dropped within them. Uh, and even prior to that, Isaiah was saying, we're all doomed. Right, brother? We're all doomed. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, yeah. Look who's in the White House now. We are all doomed. And the Lord says, look a little higher. Look a little higher. I'm still on the throne. 
I will always rule the universe. Uh Uh-huh. And guide the affairs of men. Everything in his hands. He caused Isaiah to look higher than the throne of Uzziah. And God wants your Uzziahs to die, your belief in the the maddenate systems to crumble. Whatever it takes for your man to go down, whoever you think your man is. Hopefully you've come to a place where you don't pick sides no more. I hope you're not red and you're not blue. I hope you're just God Almighty. I hope, I hope your eyes have looked a little higher than this natural realm. I hope you don't declare red or blue, because I stopped. I just declare God Almighty. Amen. And the whole earth, the whole earth is filled with his glory. When you look out into the earth, what do you cry out? Holy, holy, holy. Do you, do, do you do that on a daily basis or do you watch the news and does some other corruption come out of your mouth? Does corruption come out of your mouth? Somebody, maybe a mighty, fiery seraphim, will, will have the grace to come and touch you with a coal from the altar. Will you stop speaking the evil and speaking the holy? Amen. Holy, holy, Lord God Almighty. The seraphim... Their vision and perspective is from the throne of God in heaven. And let me tell you something lastly. It says they're full of eyes. It says they're full of eyes in their front and their back. Why are they full of eyes? I don't know. Maybe they're always looking for God. Maybe they're just always looking. You can have lots of reasons. They're just always looking for God. We are taught and we know if you look for him... You will find him. If you can't find him, it's because you're not looking at him or looking for him. Praise the Lord, everybody. God said today that he wants to give you a vision of God. He wants to give you a vision of the throne room of heaven. To see God Almighty and all the majestic beings of heaven. That is more real than anything that is physical. And then he says this. He says, forget about the blessing you're blessed. Well, somebody please say Here I am, O God. Here I am, O God. Send me. Come on. Send me. Use me. Let me be the mighty one sent from heaven. Yes. Let me be the mighty one sent from heaven. Amen, everybody. God is asking something of you today. Will we be the Isaiah of old that says, here I am, O God. Come on now, say it with me. Here I am, O God. <laughs> Send me. God bless you all. Why don't you stand? What you got for us? Tiger Lou, what you got for us? Sister Trick, God bless you all. Amen.